In this video, I am going to talk about five tips or some things to keep in mind when doing propositional logic proofs. So the first tip I have is just to know the difference between the various proposition types. This is something maybe that's pretty standard for some people, but if you're not able to identify a certain formula as being belonging to a certain type, then you're going to struggle with knowing which rule to apply or which rule of a set of rules to apply. So for example, looking at P wedge Q, you want to know that this type of formula is a conjunction. Or if you're looking at not P or Q, you want to know here that the main operator is the negation and the operator with the next most amount of scope is the V or sign for disjunction. And finally, you know, just as a third example, this P right arrow Q is a conditional. So you want to be able to look at a particular formula and identify the main operator and associate it with a particular proposition type. The reason you want to be able to know how to do this is because knowing this information gives you at least a clue about what types of rules you should look at. If you're working in a system, a derivation system that has a bunch of different rules, let's say 20, you know, they can have over 20, 20 rules, having to look through each and every one is a pretty time consuming process. But if you look at a particular format and say, hey, that particular format is a conjunction, then it sort of narrows down your search quite a bit. You look at the conjunction, you say, oh, this is a conjunction. I can apply, let's say, conjunction elimination to this rule because that's a particular type of rule that applies to this particular proposition type. Or if you're looking at this negated disjunction, you say, I'm going to look at um, rules that apply to negated disjunction and at least temporarily ignore some of the other ones. So you might look at this negated disjunction and say, hey, I can use De Morgan's laws. Now, whether or not you're going to use any of these rules is another question, but it at least gives you a sense of what rules you could maybe immediately apply here or that are good candidates for using. The next distinction is to be familiar with if you're working within an interlem system between the distinction between an introduction derivation rules and elimination derivation rules. The elimination rules essentially are rules where you reason from a formula of a particular type to some other formula. So for example, conjunction elimination, this wedge E, is reasoning from a conjunction to some other type of formula. And so just to kind of state this one more time, if you're going to use conjunction elimination, you'll be reasoning from a conjunction to a formula that is from, let's say, P wedge Q, to a wolf or well-formed formula like P or Q or something like that. The same thing will be true for disjunctions or disjunction elimination or conditional elimination. You're reasoning from a disjunction to uh, another formula or from a conditional and some other formula to another formula. So into elimination rules, you reason from a formula of particular type to other formulas. In contrast, an introduction rule says that you're reasoning to a formula of a particular type. So in contrast to conjunction elimination where you're reasoning from a conjunction, in conjunction introduction, you're reasoning to a conjunction. So you're always the resulting formula that you're going to derive will be a conjunction. So you might reason from let's say P on one line and Q on one line to this conjunction P wedge Q if you were to use conjunction introduction. And the same thing would be true for conditional introduction or disjunction introduction. In conditional introduction, you'd be reasoning to a conditional. In disjunction introduction, you're reasoning to a disjunction. A third tip is to apply elimination rules to break down well-formed formulas in a proof. If you're given two or three premises in a proof and you're not maybe sure where to start, one thing to do is perhaps break the formulas down so they're no longer as complex. So for example, Let's say you had P wedge Q wedge R. We can identify this particular format as a conjunction, and then we can apply conjunction elimination to simplify this well-formed formula. And by simplify, I just mean to reason to or derive formulas of that aren't as complex, that don't have as many, let's say, parts to them. So we can use conjunction elimination on P wedge Q wedge R 
to reason to P wedge Q, and then we can use it again, this conjunction elimination again, to reason to R, and we can use it again to, on P wedge Q to break down or simplify this P wedge Q further into P on one line and Q on one line. And once you get to this point, you can say, hey, now I have these simpler formulas to work with, maybe I'm, now it becomes apparent as how to solve the proof. Another example would be, let's say you have P, P right arrow Q, this conditional. You can identify this as a conditional, and then you might look to see if you can use conditional elim elimination to break this formula down or to simplify it into smaller parts. In the case of conditional elimination, you look to see if you also had a uh, proposition P on its own line, and then from there, you could use conditional elimination on P right arrow Q P to reason to Q. And so you've sort of broken this P right arrow Q down in that you've derived a simpler formula into the uh, proof, which is Q. So tip three to keep in mind is if you're not really sure to where, to where to start sometimes and you have premises to work with, try to apply elimination rules to reason from particular well-formed formulas to formulas of lesser complexity. Where I said uh, in the previous tip that you might want to use elimination rules to simplify or break down complex formulas, you want to think about using introduction rules, rules where you reason to formulas of a particular type when you have a type of proposition you think would be helpful in the proof. So for example, let's say you say, I really would like this disjunction P wedge or PVQ. Maybe because it's the conclusion or because you see if I had this particular formula, I would be able to use a rule that it would allow me to get the conclusion. The thing to note is, again, this particular type of formula is a disjunction. And when you're thinking about trying to derive this particular disjunction, you should say, what type of rule allows me to reason to disjunctions? And the answer here would be, or at least one potential answer would be, disjunction introduction if you're working in an intel m system intel uh, disjunction introduction says that if you have p or if you had q on a line you could reason to p v q so the idea here is you want to think about or look at the formula you want to derive and then identify the type of formula that it is and then think about what type of introduction rule would allow you to reason to that particular conclusion Let's look at another example. Let's say you really would like this conditional P right arrow Q. You identify it as a conditional and as a formula you want to derive. Then you say, well, what introduction rule would allow me to reason to a conditional? Well, one answer is conditional introduction. And this gives you a hint or tip as to how to move forward in the proof. You say, well, I'm gonna to try to make use of conditional introduction, this introduction rule, because it would derive into the proof the formula that I want. So you'd assume P, under this assumption P, you could try to derive Q, and then once you've kind of made these steps, you can use conditional introduction to derive P right arrow Q. So where elimination rules, you reason from a formula of a particular type, and you can use these elimination rules to break down formulas into uh, simpler, simpler parts. The introduction rules, you can use these smaller or simpler parts to reason to formulas that you want to derive into the proof. In short, one tactic or one strategy for solving proofs is use elimination rules to simplify things. So use as many elimination rules as you think is needed and then then start to use introduction rules to derive the conclusion for this last rule sometimes people ask like well what should i assume at any given point in the proof when i have to make an assumption it's sometimes hard to give advice concerning this because that will depend upon the type of proof and the type of assumption you make is often based upon the type of formula you want to derive into a proof but just to give some general advice concerning making assumptions is let's say you've exhausted the use of elimination rules and you have also exhausted the use of introduction rules where, where you're trying to drive a particular formula of a particular type and you just need to make an assumption because you're not sure kind of how to move forward. One example or one kind of tactic is to simply assume the opposite of your conclusion Try to derive a contradiction within the subproof 
and then use either negation elimination or negation introduction. Essentially, when you take this strategy, you're trying to say, well, let's assume the, the conclusion is false and let's see what that gets us. Maybe that leads us to absurdity, a situation where both P and not P follow. And if it leads us to this type of absurdity, then we can reason to the opposite of the um, of our assumption, which is the formula that we want. So let's look at an example. Suppose we have this particular proof, which is not P or P entails w and we're just totally stumped as to what to do we kind of look at not p or p and we say i don't really know what to do uh, i don't know how to break this down further and we also look at w and we say i don't know how to reason to this particular type of formula i just don't know which rule to apply one option you might take is to say you know what i'm going to assume the opposite of my conclusion which is not w so we're assuming the literal negation of the conclusion and then the goal of this subproof will be to drive P on one line and not P on the other. So we're showing that from the negation of W, both P and not P from, follow from the assumption that not W is, the, is assumed. And if we can do this, if we can reason from not W to P and not P, then we can use negation elimination in this case to derive W. So this is a kind of general tip. It might not be the most helpful, but if you're getting kind of stuck, one option or one strategy is always to assume the negation of the conclusion, try to derive a contradiction. And if you can do this, you can use negation introduction or elimination to solve the proof.